What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to another Radformational segment, i.e. me giving you some cool rotary engine knowledge. So, we're here to talk about the difference between a 13B and a 12A. Now, you might think, we well, already know the difference. The 13B is bigger and the 12A is this. Well, this is going to go into more detail so that way you can mix and match and you build cool combinations of stuff and you don't think you have useless parts in your garage so because things ch things can go in between both so here we go back to basics what's the difference well 13b says 13b and 12a says 12a you also might notice this looks a little bit smaller than that one right so the difference between a 13b and a 12a displacement 13B, 1.3 liter motor, 12A is a 1.1 liter. And you might ask, where does that get made up at? So, this is the rotor housing, if you didn't know that. We're going to take the old digital caliper here, we're going to measure the thickness of it, okay? So, the thickness of a 12A housing is 70 millimeters. 69, 90, 70, same thing. Now, 13B is 80. Okay. One centimeter wider on each rotor housing gets you 0.2 whole liters of displacement. So, in addition to the housing being wider, the rotors have to be wider, right? Because they ride in the housing. So, 13B rotor, 12A rotor. This thing is a baby compared to the 13B one. We'll do a direct side by side comparison right there. Now, this is where things start to get awesome. A 13B and a 12A cross-sectionally are the exact same dimension. Meaning, this view of the rotor that you see right here is the same for both a 13B and a 12A. They are the exact same size. Push these two up to next to each other. Boom, diggity, smooth, flushy flush, right? So now, what does that mean? You can use side seals from a 13B on a 12A rotor. You can use old control rings from a 13B on a 12A motor. You can use, I don't think the bearings are the same, I think they're a different thickness, but you should always check your bearing clearances anyways to make sure that you're not getting some that are too big or too little. Um, newer cars have different tolerances, so check that. Usually, if you're replacing bearings in a motor, you probably know a decent amount about that motor already or you're having a shop build your engine. So, moving onward, as well, as the rotor being the same, the housings, same thing. So, that means that stack of 12A irons you've got in your garage, because 12A motors generally roach the housings, isn't useless, okay? So, a very awesome and popular combination you can build Take a set of 12A irons, take a set of GSLSE or old school 13B housings and build you a 13B. You can use the 12A irons, you can use a 13B E shaft, 13B rotors, it's all the same, it all bolt together. The main reason, okay, that you have to have the old school stuff to mix with the 12A or a GSLSE motor, all 12As had the coolant groove for the coolant seal right here built in to the rotor housing. So you can see it's recessed right here. On 13Bs, older than 85, so a GSLC 13B or an old school 13B is the same. It's built into the rotor housing. That's why you can interchange the plates, the irons. On an FC motor, which is what this is, you can see that the housing is perfectly smooth right here. Okay. On an FC motor, an FD motor, they are built into the iron and the housing is smooth. So, you can't take a set of FC rotor housings and put them with 12A plates. There's no room for the coolant seal and I promise you no matter how much silicone you put on there, it will not hold. So, continuing to the cool interchangeability of these two, these two bits here. Since a 12A is two centimeters overall shorter, one per rotor housing. 
You can't just mount a 13B in its place. Now you can. It's very close, but it just won't fit right. Transmission is going to move a little bit. So, say you have a first gen, right? For example, this one, it's got a front motor bar that mounts the motor to the subframe. You can see there's the subframe pickups. And over here is the motor out of that race car, as you know. So here's your front motor plate right here. This nice, glorious piece of steel. So there are variations of this front motor plate, i.e. like a Repu has a different one. Um, we'll say like a RX3 might have a different one. You just got to make sure you got the right one for your car. So if you can imagine, right, a 13B is longer. So this motor plate is not as bent as it would be on a 12A. On a 12A, it pushes this piece right here is at a heavier angle, pushing the motor backwards, or maybe really only pushing the pickup point backwards. So, you can get away with just slotting these holes right here, just slot them this way, so that way you can slide it in place and put it in. Now, continuing at the front of the motor, you might have picked up a first gen and it's got a blown up 12A. Or it might even have a blown up 13B if you have a, a GSLSE. And you might say, well, it's so hard to find these 12A parts. You know, we can't find a motor. I don't really have the skills to build an engine myself. But hey, my buddy down the street has a FC and the motor runs good, but he's putting an LS in it or a turbo or whatever the heck he's doing, you know. So he's just getting rid of this NA motor because you know they're junk and nobody wants them. Well, you were in luck. So all the rotary stuff generally the FD is a little different but from series 5 and before you can take a, most people say a 12A front cover 12A GSLSE just one of these old school front covers get you a 12A front cover or the cover that came off the motor in your first gen put it on that FC engine put your put a GSLSE or I would have to be a GSLSE oil pan on it if you're putting it in a first gen Pop that motor in your first gen, get the right intake manifolds for it, pop a distributor in it, and you're good to go. So you can always put the 12A front cover, or just an old school front cover with that front motor plate, on anything S5 and prior. And I think, I think it's pretty much the same on an FD motor, but I'd have to check. I know the coolant setup's a little bit different, so I would have to look. And I don't work on that many of those motors to know. So, right off the top of my head, but I can Google it, or you can Google it to just look. So... That addresses your mounting. Now, you might say, well, what about the clutch and the flywheel and all this stuff? They're all the same diameter besides turbo, RX-8, and an FD has a pole-style pole clutch, and you'll never really probably mess with that. But a turbo has a bigger diameter flywheel. An RX-8 has the same diameter flywheel as turbo. All the other flywheels are the same diameter, so they will work in the transmission. So, for example, say you have... A 12A car. Okay, you can put a 13B out of an FC in it. Use the right flywheel for the engine balance you have. I'll repeat that. The flywheel matches the engine balance. So, if you have an S4 motor and you know that it has S4 rotors in it, you need to use an S4 flywheel. Now, you can put an S4 turbo flywheel on an S4 in a motor. No problem just as bigger diameter. So if so you have a Turbo 2 Trans or an RX-8 Trans and you want to run the big clutch, put the Turbo 1 on there. As long as S4 matches S4, you're golden. Okay, so same thing for 12As. If you have a 78 to 80 12A, so early 12A, you have to use a 78 to 80 flywheel because the balance of the flywheel matches the balance of the rotors. If you mix it up, it's going to rattle apart and parts will go through your hood. Probably not, but they might. So, Staying on the topic of balance, rotors have a balance. They also have a direction on a 12A. 13B, they don't. So on a 12A and 13B, you have to match the rotor balance. There's a letter on each one of these rotors. Bam, right there, letter B. Okay, so with those, you can run one letter away. So it goes A, B, C, D, E. I think there's F, A, B, C, D, E. So for example, this 13B rotor right there, you can see letter C. So you can run a B rotor with a C rotor, but you can't run a B rotor with a D rotor. Get it? Too far away. So, match your pairs. Also, you have to run the same series of rotors together because of the compression. 
the compression depression. <laughs> okay, so your compression cavity on each series of rotor is different. So this is an S4 NA rotor. This right here is a GSLC rotor. You can see just in that picture right there, the shape of this is very much different. It's a little more rounded on this edge. This is dead straight, you know, each side dead straight. Also, you'll notice three millimeter apex seal, two millimeter apex seal. You can see that the FC rotor has a narrow one, the, the S4 rotor. And the GSLSC has a three millimeter apex seal. Now, I'm gonna confuse you even more. A 12A, three millimeter apex seal, big wide boy. Okay, matches that GSLC one. And it has directional, or well, specific rotors to each part. On 13Bs like these, you do not have to denote the front and the rear rotor. On a 12A, you do, because the compression, or your compression cavity here, is directional, right? So. In every motor, the stationary gears oppose each other. So one's at the back, one's at the front. You'll notice right here, stationary gear on the outside, stationary gear on the outside. Both of the compression chambers face the same direction. Okay, we have the front and the rear. Now, you might ask, well, what if I put a rear in the front and a front in the rear? So you switch them. They do still go the same direction. But, what you can't do is run a front with a front and a rear with a rear because it'll look like that. They're opposites. No bueno. So, that's pretty much everything for the rotors. That's pretty much everything for mounting your motor. Ooh, what about the header, you might think. So, it is somewhat-ish common practice, at least here at the Rad Ranch, to just run what you brung. With that being said, you'll notice that this is a 12A. It's smaller. The ports are smaller for the exhaust. They're also smaller diameter for the exhaust on a 12A. Let's just do a direct comparison right here. 12A, 13B. Noticeably smaller. Okay. This dimension here between the two studs is the exact same on both of them. Height-wise, it's the same. The only difference is going to be one centimeter, not two, because it's centered, so you're only taking a half a centimeter from each. So, what you can do on your on your header flange, I'll just show you over here because we got one laying here. So on your header flange, right here, so this is a 13B header, so all you gotta do is slot this hole <coughs> a quarter centimeter that way and a quarter centimeter that way. Or no, a half a centimeter each. <coughs> a half a centimeter each way, because that's one centimeter narrower. And what that will allow you to do is to put your 13B header on your 12A. Reason I say doing it that direction. So 13B over 12A, not 12A on 13B. 13B's got bigger holes, right, for the bigger exhaust ports. The 13B will cover up the 12A holes, and it will line up mildly right okay now generally the reason I say mildly you're pulling pulling hairs here on horsepower if you're doing that if you can get your hands on a good 13B header run it on your 12A you'll be just fine I've got one on my bridge port out there or on the silver car out there no exhaust leaks works great it's just because that's what I could find so generally when you have that big one it's not going to sit perfectly centered right it's going to sit a little bit offset but it's going to cover the whole exhaust port, so all of that will go into the into the exhaust. Now, keep in mind, dude, you got a 12A. If you got a bridge port, you might be making 200 horsepower, 250. If you're boosted, you probably have a 12A manifold or something custom. If you're just trying to get your car on the road, get some cool parts on it. Keep things simple. Just find a header, a rotary header. As long as it fits your chassis, run it. Bam. So that's that part. Now, I feel like I've been talking super fast. There is variations in housings between all of them. So the 12A's got like old school or older housings. 12A has twin distributor stuff, which I just wouldn't mess with it. And you probably won't ever find twin distributor stuff in your searches um, for things just because it doesn't come up for sale often. And if you do, I've really never worked on one, so I can't really help you there. But I'm sure there's somebody that has that you can find. Or uh, comment below and I can help, help you find somebody. 
But there's variations in like the spark plug area here has different stuff going on, different casting marks, different casting marks on the top for the old school stuff. Um, 13Bs have a whole bunch of different castings. Um, you have like a scripted housing, which has the old school logo right here, um, like what's on the repo. You've got ones that have different spots up here, like the oil port might be different. You've got, this is a big one, you see some backyard builders, don't ever check this. On the variations of housings, the distance between the two spark plug holes or the location they're in is different. So you can't run like an S5 turbo housing with an S4 turbo housing because the spark plug separation is different. So your split is different. So you have to match the housings to each other. Um, it's general practice. Oh yeah, the E-shaft shorter on a 12A, but it's shorter. Figured you'd notice that. So if you look up here, the one on the left is a 12A shaft, the one on the right is 13B, you can see it's closer to the ceiling, shorter. So, know that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, build you some hybrid stuff. Those are the things to pay attention to when you're putting your motor together and the things to check. Always make sure your rotor balances match. Always make sure that your rotors match, like the series of them match. Um, there's a whole bunch of cool custom stuff you can have done to rotors, but I think that's for a future video. And I think if this wasn't super long-winded, everything will probably make it in. So thank you for tuning in to this rad formational segment on the variation between a 12A and a 13B with regards to the engine. And I am going to get back to welding on this car, which you'll see in the next video, because the engine bay is going to be painted in the next video. So thanks for tuning in. Comment below with any questions, and we'll see you next time.